What's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here, coming at you with another episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to be talking about your emotional home, the real secret behind your success or failure in life as well as in business. What do I mean by your emotional home? Where you camp out, where you stay, where you live emotionally most of the time. So let me ask you a question. If you were to rate how you feel on a regular basis, on average, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being you feel phenomenal, you feel powerful, you feel resourceful, you feel peaceful, you feel poised to be able to bring your best and do your best every day. And one being you're dragging your butt out of bed, you're dragging your butt through the day, you're just making it through the day, you're not creating powerfully, you're just kind of existing, you're just kind of making it through. Where would you say you are on a scale of one to 10? 10 being exceedingly powerful, one being you're just getting by. Where would you say you are? A five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine? A four, a three, where would you say you are? Give yourself an honest assessment. That would be your emotional home. Where you tend to be emotionally most of the time. Now, we don't want to judge it. We don't want to make it wrong. We don't want to make it something it doesn't need to be. You don't need to add condemnation to it, judgment to it, make yourself feel bad, make, your, make yourself feel like you should be higher this is just an honest assessment of where you're at now, because here's the thing. You cannot change your reality until you face your reality. So this is about really just getting in touch with the truth of where you're at most of the time on average right now. Lots can change. And hopefully out of this episode and what you're going to be hearing today, you're going to get new insight, new distinctions that will give you a whole new perspective so you can start to elevate your emotional home faster. Now, why does this matter? What does this have to do with success anyways? What does this have to do with results and success or failure anyways, Doran? I'm glad you asked. You see, most mortgage professionals, most people in general, think that in order to create a breakthrough in their income, a breakthrough in their business, it's about some whiz-bang fancy tactic or strategy, some bright, shiny object, some new social media strategy or something outside of themselves, some kind of tactical strategy or principle that's going to help them create a breakthrough. And while that may help to an extent, while that may give you a little uptick in results, that is not the cause of unprecedented breakthrough results. That will keep you stuck in the same rut of stagnation if all you do is focus on tactics and strategies. Because all that does is just skip along the surface of what really makes a difference. It's like handing someone a Band-Aid when they need surgery when they're on the ground bleeding to death and you hand them a Band-Aid, just giving them a tactic or strategy without shifting them emotionally and shifting how they show up every day emotionally is like handing them a Band-Aid. It doesn't get to the root cause. It doesn't get to the real root of the problem. So I wanna show you something. I've got some really fancy audio video equipment for you today on display with this little presentation slide <laughs> that I wrote up on paper here. And you can see it's got a juxtaposition of two different ways of approaching life. We got the average way and the achiever's way. So as you can see, the achiever's way looks very different than the average way. In fact, they're the complete opposite. Let's start with the average way. The average way of approaching life is that you look at the bank account, you look at your results, and you let it dictate how you feel. And so you're constantly trying to get your bank account higher, to get your results higher, so you can feel a certain way, right? So that you can feel happy, so you can feel free, so you can feel confident, so you can feel significant. So we're wanting to get the nice house or the nice car or the fat bank account or whatever it is so we can feel a certain way. So the results are driving the emotion. You see that? We are the effect in this case of outside circumstances. We're not at the cause, we're at the effect. Now on the flip side, 
Conversely, notice how the achiever's way is the complete opposite. The achiever's way is not achieving to be happy, but happily achieving. In other words, the achiever's way is to feel certainty, to feel confidence, to feel powerful, to feel resourceful, to feel poised and peaceful, and any emotion that you may deem as positive in advance of the results that most people are looking for so that they can feel a certain way. The achievers don't achieve to be happy. They found a way to happily achieve. In other words, before they have 100 Gs in the bank account, before they can feel a sense of financial security, they cultivate emotions of financial security and certainty around their success in advance of that showing up in their bank account. They drive their emotions of success, which drive the results of success. They drive the certainty of success emotionally, which drives the results of success in actuality. You see the difference here? Well, the average way is looking to the bank account to determine what the emotions feel like. The achiever's way is all about feeling powerful, feeling certainty, feeling resourceful, feeling positive, feeling happy, feeling juiced and jacked in advance of the results showing up. Do you see that? And that's why most people don't achieve much in life because they wait for the results before they feel certainty. They wait for the results before they feel a sense of significance and passion and commitment and a spark in their eye and pep in their step. They're waiting for the results before they can feel the way they want to feel. And that's not how life works. And that's why most people are broke, fat, depressed. See, everyone wants to be a champion, but very few people are willing to cultivate the emotional home required to become a champion because it requires us to take 110% responsibility for us being the cause of our life. And let's face it, that's hard freaking work, right? That's extreme ownership. Most people are not willing to take that kind of extreme ownership. So it's not about tactics. It's not about strategies. It's about cultivating that emotional home of resourcefulness. What is your emotional home? Is your emotional home generally positive, upbeat, uh, with confidence, certainty, resourcefulness, or is it something else? Are you generally feeling great even in the face of challenges, even in the face of problems? Or are you tossed around emotionally like a leaf in the wind to and fro, depending on whether it's sunny skies or stormy, tumultuous, windy weather? Do you have peace in the eye of the storm? Or do you let the storm suck you into the vortex of suffering, self-inflicted suffering, where you fret, you get overwhelmed, you get anxiety, you're losing sleep, you're dwelling on the problem, you're dwelling on what's not working, and you're causing unnecessary suffering to yourself. Notice how that impacts your productivity. Notice how that impacts how you show up as a leader in your business. Notice how that impacts how you're able to be at the cause of breakthrough results or not so much. Notice how that impacts how you're able to lead your team if you have a team. Notice how that impacts how you show up with your clients and your realtors. You see, everything in your business has to do with how you're showing up in life. We are merchants of certainty. Are you bringing confidence and certainty and positivity to everything you do and everyone you touch and everyone you work with? Because if you're not, that's your opportunity for your breakthrough right there. So I've just shown you the juxtaposition between the average way and the achiever's way. Between being at the cause 
or the effect? Are you being at the cause of your emotions, which in turn allow you to be at the cause of your results? Or are you being at the effect of circumstance? Getting real about how you live life in that respect and being willing to embrace a new perspective and a new standard where you just decide enough is enough, no more. I've had it. I'm no longer going to be the bitch of circumstance. I'm going to be the cause of circumstance. I'm no longer going to allow circumstances to dictate how I feel. I and I alone determine how I feel. And you start to cultivate certainty and confidence and resourcefulness every day in spite of challenges, in the face of challenges. That's when you become the true leader of your life. That's when you have a wide open 360 degree possibility for creating a life by design. As Jim Rohn would say, cultivating the art and the gift of living well. He said it better, actually. He said, it's cultivating the fine art of living well. Those are the words. The fine art of living well. That means you're the designer. You are the master chef. You are the masterpiece maker. And the other thing to consider is that beliefs determine your emotional home. If you don't believe that you're at the cause of your emotions, if you don't believe that your thoughts and your beliefs and your perspectives and the meaning you're adding to every experience is the cause of your emotions and the cause of your uh, resourcefulness and the cause of your actions and the cause of your results, then you'll never take ownership of it. If you don't take that one premise and embrace it for yourself, that you're the cause of your emotional home and you're the cause of your results and you're the cause of how you feel at any moment in time, nothing I'm saying here is going to make any difference for you because it flies in the face of your misconception that your life is at the effect of circumstances that your life is the effect of your pipeline, that your life is at the effect of your income. But Doran, you're telling me that I can have no money and I got to feed my family and I'm supposed to feel positive? What kind of bullshit is that? Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying whatever is right now in your life, whatever results you have in your life are the consequence of past emotions, past level of resourcefulness, past level of action or inaction, past quality and quantity of action or inaction. And all of that is a ripple effect into your present called results. Your present reality is the wake of how you've been showing up in the past. And all of that is inextricably linked with your emotional home. So if your emotional home in the past was four out of 10 and you're generally feeling depressed, anxious, worried, you're hesitant, you're indecisive, you're non-committal and you're not resourceful, that is going to show up day upon day, week upon week, month upon month in not only your pipeline, but it's going to show up in your entire life, emotionally, relationally, spiritually. And this is the premise that you need to embrace before you can really be the leader of your life and create breakthrough results, that you are the cause, my friend, not the government, Not rates, not regulations, not your company, not your sales manager, not your spouse, not the fact that refis have drawn up, not the fact that realtors are a pain in the ass, none of that. You and you alone, my friend, are the cause of your results, period. And once you embrace that and you take extreme ownership of that, not to beat yourself up and condemn yourself, but to embrace that you're the master chef, you are the masterpiece maker. You are the designer of your life. You are the architect of your life. You get to create it exactly the way you want it. Yes, you really do get to create it exactly the way you want it. If you embrace extreme ownership that your life is a reflection of your commitment to a worthy ideal and your faithfulness towards that ideal and your diligence towards creating and crafting and cultivating that ideal and never, ever, ever settling for anything less. You can have it exactly the way you want it. How awesome is that to know, to embrace, to receive? 
and to live your life by, as opposed to being tossed and fro by the winds and changes of circumstance and being a bitch of circumstance. I mean, what would you prefer? Those are your two options, friends. It's either one or the other. You're either the bitch of circumstance or you're at the cause of circumstance, where you literally lead circumstance, not because you're all powerful and all knowing, because we're not, only God is, but because you know that you can add whatever meaning you choose to any circumstance you face. So you're facing challenges. You say, hey, I got this. By God's grace, I'm going to make through this. By God's grace, I'm going to get stronger, better, wiser, sharper because of this. I'm going to use this not as a setback, but as a setup. This is not just a breakdown. This is a breakdown to break through. I'm seeing this as an opportunity to get wiser, to get sharper, to get stronger, to step up my game. This is not a stumbling block. This is a stepping stone to launch me to my purpose. You see, it's all about your vision. It's about your perspective. It's about meaning. It's about cultivating certainty in the face of uncertainty. That's what leaders do. Are you leading your life powerfully? If you're not, it's because you've got beliefs that are stealing your power. You've got beliefs that are feeding the fire of the victim within instead of the victor within. You've got beliefs that are feeding the fire of the wimp within instead of the warrior and the winner within. And once you feed the fire of the winner within, the warrior within, the champion within, and you choose to starve out the wimp ideas, the wimp thoughts, the wimp beliefs that keep you stuck in victim mode, you will show up powerfully every day. In the face of turbulence and challenges, you'll have your shoulders back, You'll breathe deeply and you'll own your power to be resourceful no matter what shows up, no matter what comes up, no matter what gets thrown your way. How awesome would that be to live that kind of a life? That's what I'm talking about. That's called a legendary legacy. Leaving awake for your friends and your family and your colleagues and your, and your closest people in your circle. If you have kids, your kids, if you have a spouse, your spouse, the people who God has planted in your life for a purpose. Those people see you and see you leading your life in that way. Imagine the life-changing impact, the legendary posterity and legacy of you living like that and the ripple effect of them not just talking, you talking about it, but you walking about it, you living this kind of a life. Think about the ripple effect of that through generations to generations. I don't know about you, but that fires me up. That's what I call a legendary legacy, making a difference in the lives of people for generations to come, not because of what you said, but because of how you live. So your beliefs determine your emotional home. And you cannot be powerfully compelling yourself to positive emotion if you have victim beliefs. You just can't. It's impossible. So what beliefs are you holding on to that are keeping you at a five out of 10 or a three out of 10 or a six out of 10? If you're not powerfully showing up at an eight, nine out of 10 every day, there's a weed called a lie in your mind that's stealing your ability to take extreme ownership for your life and choose an empowering meaning that allows you to be powerful in the face of the challenge. What is that lie? What is that misconception? Once you weed it out, I'm telling you, your whole life will change. Your results will transform almost overnight. So beliefs determine your emotional home. The other thing that determines your emotional home is your routines. I mean, if you look at your routines, if you look at the time you go to bed in, in the, at nighttime, what you do for the hour before you go to bed, whether it be reading a book or watching trash TV, the time you go to bed, whether it be at a decent hour or late into the night, when everyone else is renewing and refreshing and rejuvenating, you're feeding your mind with trash TV, some of you, and you wonder why you're not feeling like powerful and resourceful. Well, go figure. Look at what you're putting in your mind right before you go to bed. Look at what you're impressing upon your subconscious mind right before you go to bed. Is it quality? See, the quality of your routine dictates the quality of your results. Rarely in life will the quality of your results exceed the quality of your daily routine. You can't get a champion level result with a chump level routine. You just can't. You can't eat junk food and think you're going to get fit. It ain't going to happen. 
right? So getting yourself present to what kind of routines and what kind of habits you have that aren't serving you is another key piece to your breakthrough. You can't change your reality until you face it, right? So for example, I used to waste time playing video games. And here I am a coach trying to serve people, trying to help people create breakthroughs. And I'm messing around, wasting time playing video games. I can't even remember what the hell the game is now. It's been a while. But it's some stupid war game where I'm building, you know, castles and empires and I'm, I'm, I'm upgrading cannons and all this, right? And I got my son. He's in the mix now. So now I got my son roped in because he wants to be like daddy. So I'm not wasting all this time. I even accidentally messed up the settings on my iTunes. And my son, I think he dropped like 100 bucks because I didn't have the proper settings in place. He pressed some buttons. All of a sudden, $100 of real money on the stupid video game. Right. <laughs> and it just one day I occurred to him like, what the hell am I doing? I'm trying to help people change people's lives and I'm wasting this time and money playing video games. There's nothing wrong with playing video games. Don't get me wrong. But is this a champion level routine that's going to help me create a champion level life? No, the honest, the honest answer is no, it's not. And so I just decided to let it go. I don't miss it one iota. I don't miss it one iota. My wife and I, before we got married over 15 years ago, we decided not to have TV in the home. We haven't had TV in the home for 15 years. We have a home theater sister system, but we don't have cable TV, satellite TV, any of that. We have Netflix that we watch maybe once a week. But aside from that, I mean, we don't really watch TV. Dorn, how the hell do you live life with no TV? I don't know. It's just a habit now. <laughs> I don't think about it anymore. I read books. I hang out with my wife. We go in the hot tub and just have some hangout time right? We just have connection time instead of just having FaceTime in front of this big box. It just, I'm replacing the good for something better. I'm replacing the good with the great as far as I'm concerned. So until and unless we're willing to let go of the good to embrace the great, we'll stay stuck in stagnation and mediocrity. That's just the, the real deal of truth, guys. The arch rival of Greatness is always going to be good. The mortal enemy of greatness is good. You've got a good income. You've got a good routine. You've got a good family life. You've got things comfortable. Things are good. That'll always be the mortal enemy of great because it seduces you into the comfort zone. It has you get complacent. As soon as you start to eat from the bread of your comfort zone, you start to eat from the bread of complacency, you start to drift instead of drive. You start to neglect. You start to settle for second best in your life. And so your routines determine your emotional home, but that's determined by your beliefs. And so it comes down to, are you willing to settle for second best in life? Are you willing to settle for okay? Are you willing to settle for good? Are you willing to settle for a good life, an okay life? Or are you committed to a great life? Which leads me to the next thing, which determines your emotional home. And that's your standards. See, if it's, if it's something you should do, I should exercise more. I should watch less TV. I should read more. I should spend more time reaching out to realtors or reaching, reaching out to clients, or I should be working on my business instead of in, in my business. All you end up doing is just shooting all over yourself and feeling bad about it and never getting anywhere. What changes your life is when you just decide enough is enough, no more. I've had it. I'm done. I'm committed to being a champion. I'm committed to paying the price and embracing these champion level results. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up at X time. I'm going to go to the gym. In order to do that, I need to go to bed at Y time so I can have a good quality sleep. I'm going to call clients at this time each day. I'm going to call realtors at this time each day. I'm going to use this novel concept called the do not disturb setting on my phone. And I'm going to put the blinders on for that one hour of power every day where I'm rain making. You see, it just comes down to standards where you just decide enough is enough. No more. I've had it. I'm done. You decide to not settle for victim mode. You decide to not inflict self-imposed suffering upon yourself by feeling sorry for yourself, 
why me, poor me, playing the victim role when turbulence shows up. You just decide. I eat problems for freaking breakfast, baby. I don't care what the problem is. I'm ready. I use problems to serve to my purpose, to serve to my greatness. Bring it on, baby. I'm ready. I got this. Building a business is an adventure in problem solving. I got this. And you just decide to not even eat a morsel from the bread of self-inflicted suffering by playing the victim role. Notice it's a standard you set for yourself. You just decide enough is enough. No more. I've had it. I'm done. That's how you change your life right there. Nothing fancy. No whiz bang, fancy, bright, shiny object. No squirreling around chasing that bright, shiny object. No doing this, doing that, and the other with tactics. And st- There's nothing tactical about any of this stuff. It's about a decision within yourself where you just decide to rise up within, the warrior within, the champion within, and you just decide to claim it and be willing to pay the price every day and raise your standards every day. That's what it takes to be a champion, not some whiz-bang tactic or strategy. That all helps, but until unless you got the champion mindset, none of that's going to help you create a champion life. It's just not. You cannot create a champion life with chump level routines, with chump level mindset, with chump level thoughts, with chump level emotions. You just can't. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. You might make it pretty, might pretty it up, but at the end of the day, it's still a pig. It's like spraying perfume on poop. It might make it smell a little bit better, but at the end of the day, it's still poop. We've got to get to the root cause, friends. We've got to re-engineer our hearts and our minds to show up powerfully every day to have our emotional home be anchored in champion level emotions, thoughts, and be in a resourceful state where we can really take charge of our lives. And associations determine our emotional home, who we we hang out with, who do you choose as friends? Are they bringing you up or are they tearing you down? Are Are they bringing you closer to being the champion you're called to be? Or are they sucking you into the vortex of old chump level routines and habits and associations that aren't serving you to your greatness. Associations in what you listen to, associations in what you watch, associations in who you hang with. Choose your associations wisely. They determine your destiny and they determine your emotional home, how you feel. Are you hanging with people that uplift you, that inspire you, that encourage you, that elevate your emotional home, make you feel great about life? Or when you hang with them, is like they stick your fang, their fangs in your neck and suck the life-giving juice out of your whole being because they're complaining, whining, and sniveling about this, that, and the other. You know what I'm talking about, right? We all have friends and family like that. Why would you inflict yourself with that? Life is challenging enough as it is. Yes, you can try and elevate them, but if it's going to be at the cost of your legacy, if it's going to be the co- at the cost of you being able to provide for your family, it's going to be the cost of your joy and your peace. I'd say you need to cut the cord and say, we can't hang anymore unless you're willing to come up with me. I'm not going down with you. It's one or the other. So I hope you guys have gotten some value from this conversation. If you would like to learn more about how to create a breakthrough in your life, a breakthrough in your business with highly effective marketing and highly effective mindset, I invite you to reach out to us. We offer a complimentary one hour breakthrough call with either myself or one of my consultants where we lift up the hood on your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at, where you want to be. If we can help you get there, by all means, we will show you how. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first person, very first people to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, you're going to leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and we're going to have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful to you, I invite you to check us out. Go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Link up with us. Let's book it in the calendar and let's make that moment in time the catalyst for your breakthrough. All right, guys. So this is Doran Aldana from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thanks for being with me. Go forward, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action, and chances are you will get massive results. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. Peace. Go forth and kick some ass. Let's do this.